is the Qualcomm XR1 AR glasses reference design. We can almost not tell the difference between these and regular glasses, am I right? Well, at least from the front. But why is this interesting? First of all, Qualcomm's reference designs are not consumer products, but they are blueprints given to companies so they can make their own versions of it. It's a reference, not a product a company can just slam their logo on and just copy the specs. That would just be lazy. But Qualcomm's work here is important and super interesting for all of us as it gives us a good glimpse of what the future of AR and VR looks like. And not far away in the future either, but for this year. Yes, Qualcomm makes uh, reference designs for VR headsets too. Like last year, it was this one with the XR2 chip that's now also in the Oculus Quest 2. Now, Qualcomm invited me to one of their press briefings, which was awesomely in VR. And over there, they showed us their new AR glasses reference design and shared all the specs. So let's talk about that. And also let me update you about the current state of AR glasses and what's coming out in the coming months. But first, if you like to see more videos like this one, subscribe if you haven't yet, as that's a huge support. And now join me beyond reality. Maybe you're now wondering why the heck would you want AR glasses if you already got a VR? Well, I'm personally equally excited about the possibilities of augmented reality as I am about virtual reality. I think both can be used for great things. For me personally, that's different things. VR is when I want to escape or be distraction free. It's perfect for gaming and well, I cannot imagine my life without my virtual world anymore. AR seems to lean more towards other things, for me at least, like productivity. Imagine browsing the web on a huge screen in a subway, or working on multiple screens while your desk <laughs> looks clean as f like this guy. AR is also less closed off, so you can make real-life hangouts with friends more fun with things like holographic board games. And these are not even the only use cases, just things that I would do with it, so this only scratches the surface. But the current situation with AR glasses and headsets is that most of them are wired. The processing is mainly done via a computing device like a smartphone. But now we have this, the Qualcomm XR1 AR glasses. So, usually we get to try these kinds of things out during events, but unfortunately that's not happening right now due to the pandemic, so I hope you don't mind, I don't have the real thing right now. But when Qualcomm hosted their briefing in Spatial, they showed us this uh, 3D design there, and I thought that was so cool, so I asked them to send it to me to show it to you. Anyways, this is Qualcomm's first AR reference design based on the Snapdragon XR1 platform that's equipped to deliver high performance immersive experiences at lower power consumptions. It runs on battery and this one as well can be tethered to a 5G smartphone, but also multiple devices like a Windows PC or a processing puck using a USB-C 3.2 Gen 1 slot. The big difference with older viewers is that computing power is now added to the glasses. This allows for perception, display and processing to be done via the glasses while the connected device does the rendering. This distributes the workload more efficiently and allows for more advanced features to run simultaneously, like hand tracking, image stabilization and rich graphics. It also makes plane detection possible, so the glasses can detect your wall and then paste virtual windows on it automatically, so it looks like you have multiple monitors. The screens are dual 0.71 inch micro OLED displays. The resolution is full HD, 1920x1080 at 90Hz, and it's set to feature a no motion blur. Interesting. View to view is 45 degrees with a fixed IPD. I'm a little worried about this though, but it also includes a bunch of sensors and dual monochrome tracking cameras that allow for 6 degrees of freedom, head and hand tracking with gesture recognition. <laughs> Sick stuff is what you need to let users uh, naturally do things like walk around the room and interact with, for example, 3D holograms. 
You can also use the RGB cameras to show other people what you are seeing. Kind of like a cyberpunk brain dance, except without the sensory stuff. But I digress. The Qualcomm XR1 also has built-in audio, two speakers and three microphones. Am I reading this right? Three? Interesting. But built-in audio is very nice as that allows for easier collaboration and streaming. Qualcomm also announced to be working on software, a 2D app framework, and this makes it possible for existing 2D Android apps to be opened as augmented virtual windows. Exactly like this, I guess. I think that's a very welcome framework, especially since AR is still so new, so if it comes out, at least there is something to do immediately. When you put it on, it should look like this. Okay, still not entirely invisible, but it does look a lot more lightweight, and at least from the front, it looks pretty good, right? I am wondering about its weight though. Is it going to fall off my nose? I mean, there's not much support at the back, so I'm very curious. But yeah, so what's coming this year? Well, first, this design might remind you a lot of what Lenovo is releasing for Enterprise, the Think Reality A3. And yes, this one is based on the Qualcomm XR1 reference design. Then, just yesterday, AR glasses by Samsung were leaked as well by Walking Cat. Very good looking ones, IMO, and it looks like the same kind of concept. These trailers are, funny enough, all kinda similar. And Ryu, who is also working closely with Qualcomm, also released some news, I think, like yesterday. As you may know, they already got AR glasses released in Korea, but now they are actually expanding to the US and Europe with the Nreal Lite. And they are coming with these neat looking MR glasses for the US as well. The last one is more for enterprise, while the light version is more for us consumers, which costs around $670 for one pair. At least that's the price for Japan. For US, we don't know yet. Uh, but that is compared to the $2,000 plus dollars dev kit, not too bad of a price. But yeah, that's where we are going this year. So far, I think I've tried a couple of AR glasses in the past and I did find that there are still challenges to overcome. And the main two things were back then the small view to view and fixed IPDs where the display looked blurry to me as it didn't fit my IPD. So I hope to see these things solved as we go, maybe this year even, but um, I do think we are getting there. I think the reference design is promising and it makes me excited to see what companies will release in the AR space and it's great that we don't have to wait too long. So let's keep an eye out on it. At least if you enjoyed this video, leave me a like if you want me to make more of these and uh, I'm curious, what do you think about this reference design? What would you primarily use it for? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and you can support us for free by watching more videos that are maybe on the screen right now. And a special thanks go to all our champions, especially these patrons down below. And as always, we are on.